Opening image and closing image. Opening image and closing image. In season two of Raising the Stakes, I made a video called Theme Shown, where I touched briefly on the importance of the opening and closing image. But there's more to this topic. So today, let's throw caution to the wind, go hog wild, and devote an entire video to the opening and closing image. Why not? Hi, I'm Jonathan Stokes, and this is Raising the Stakes, Essays About Story. Let's get into it. Everybody knows that there's a tendency for stories to do something called bookending, where they start and end with a similar image. Sometimes the same image is used. And sometimes it's just really, really similar. It can be a wide shot or a close-up. In a movie about music, the opening and closing may be the same song. Or even the same drum rudiment. Some movies achieve bookending by starting with the last scene I love you, and then catching up to it. I love you, honey bunny. Every Fight Club does this. Would you like to say a few words to mark the occasion? And even Raging Bull. But the general idea with openings and closings is a cowboy rides into town and a cowboy rides out of town. Or drives. Sometimes, characters can go on a huge journey, but still seem to end up in the same place. Sandra Bullock starts off floating in space and ends up floating in water. Maximus travels all over the Roman Empire, but his movie starts with him envisioning his farm in Spain and ends with him joining his family there in the afterlife. Sometimes, the opening and closing images can span a whole series. The Hobbits start off in the Shire, go on a globe-trotting journey for three movies, and end up back in the Shire. Jason Bourne starts his series Unconscious in the Water, and ends the series, three movies later, Unconscious in the Water, before he wakes up. So often, characters end up right back where they began. Ferris Bueller goes on his epic adventure, and ends up right back in bed where he started. Why does this happen so often? Joseph Campbell identified this mythic structure, often visualized as a circle, because the hero returns home at the end of their journey, having grown and learned lessons. It's too big. You'll grow. Your head, it fits. So your opening and closing images will often show character growth. In The Wizard of Oz, Dorothy is unhappy at home and longs to go Somewhere the rainbow. But by the closing shot, she's realized There's no place like home. In Up in the Air, George Clooney starts the movie feeling freed by his life of constant air travel. But by the end, he's trapped by it. Can you tell your whole story in just two images? Here's the Godfather at his Nevada estate, surrounded by family, especially Fredo. And here he is at the same estate at the end of the movie, utterly alone. Steve Carell is a 40-year-old virgin who starts his movie in bed alone and ends his movie like this. Great opening and closing images don't just reveal character arc, they can also Don't these images embody the circle of life? There Will Be Blood is about the corrupting power of wealth. It opens by establishing Daniel Day-Lewis as a character willing to go to any self-destructive length to get rich. Some movies set up a central dramatic question to be answered by the closing image. Usual Suspects has us wondering, 
Who is this mysterious, all-powerful killer named Kaiser? We never see his face until the closing shot. Twelve Monkeys? What a brilliant movie. Opens with Bruce Willis's childhood memory. Who is this man being killed? And it closes with Willis's stunning realization. The opening image may establish the world and the setting, but it almost always... If your story is horror, why not establish that right away? If your story is a comedy, you better open with a funny image. Which reminds me, if you really want to get an A plus on your opening image, use it to In these first few seconds, don't we know everything we need to know about Jack Sparrow? Or how about this guy? Don't we know everything we need to know about Tony Monero? Or how about this guy? I mean, if you can get the audience to love your hero before they've even said a word, that's just good storytelling. And note that in the closing scene, Jack Sparrow gets his ship, and Tony Monero goes from ladies' man to forging a mature friendship with a woman based on respect. While Peter Quill gets a new mixtape to listen to. I should also mention that sometimes the true opening and closing images, the ones that actually mirror each other, aren't the first and last shot of the movie. The Godfather gets his ring kissed in the first scene, and Michael gets his ring kissed in the last scene. But these aren't the literal first and last shots of the film. Which brings me to my last point about following prescriptive rules. Do you have to have opening and closing images that mirror each other? If we look at, say, the AFI Top 100, do 100% 100 of great movies have opening images that are answered by closing images? Not really. But this raises a really important point about story theory. I think that if you put the AFI Top 100 movies into some sort of story structure machine, and added, say, the top 100 box office mojo movies of all time, and the story machine averaged all the movies looking for patterns, the structure that it spits out would be this. Some stories won't nail every beat, and they won't fall at exactly the same time code, but the general pattern is what we storytellers must study. So if your story doesn't have an opening image that is clearly answered by your closing image, you don't have to commit seppuku. You just have to be confident that you're making the best choice for telling your story.